Okay, welcome. As promised, I'm trying to do a video showing the autopilot and controls. At the moment, everything's started and ready to go. I'll just quickly show you the autopilot controls. On here, in the center dash, we have AP1, AP2, SAS trim switch and trim on off if you switch trim you get a warning on the top right corner that displays trims off so trim is on when stabilized mode we require autopilot one autopilot at least working for the system to work so as you can see the SAS is out you can fly without autopilot and it has no stabilization or anything else you can still fly quite normally if we engage both we have the SAS uh, if you go to systems and FCS eventually I hope to get needles and things moving in here and displays at the moment this is just one no animation back to eat gas right, the model I'm flying now is updated so there are certain differences that you people that have downloaded so far won't have and it'll be in the next update down here we have the flight director course for the left hand co-pilot heading bug press to synchronize course for the right hand pilot we got MOT. Now MOT is mark on target when you're flying over a target and you want to come back onto it. There's a feature in the Bell 429, but it's not on the plugin, so it doesn't do anything. What I have done, if you press it, you'll go into velocity hold, hover, approach. This approach. You can only engage approach when you're below 200 feet and less than 60 knots and then it will bring you down to a hover, a steady hover at 50 feet when engaged. Altitude hold, show that later working. Vertical speed hold, uh, air speed hold, heading, hold, nav hold and approach this is the ILS approach hold couple flight director 2 flight director 1 and transfer flight director now these buttons it's not really working correctly and you don't really need to use any of these basically it, it on the top of the display you see a little arrow so we're co it's l number one, the left-hand flight director. Now if you press flight director, it disappears. Press it again, and we got. So that's the left flight director. Transfer it. See what happens. And we got both one and two. Press that one we get a left so th the left is number two and it's always on for some reason uh, you'll find this if you own the Bell 412 that the flight directors two is always on and you can switch one on and off so if we have two arrows it means one and two flight directors are on when you press couple you'll see a CPL in the middle here it means we're the autopilot's coupled now when you engage the autopilot modes it automatically couples so you don't have to press couple All right. All right we're already as I said ready to take off I've synchronized the heading already and we're just going to do a straightforward take off and engage attitude 
Now I've programmed my joystick for this, but you can press the the switch on the dashboard as well. Alright, into the hover. Transitioning forward, you can see the speed is increasing. And we've got 40 knots, we've got a rate of climb of about. Alright, now I'm going to engage attitude. Alright, so that's attitude engaged. I've synchronized my heading again. Engage vertical speed. You can see a vertical speed come on, heading, and airspeed. Now we've engaged at 85 knots. You can use either trim down here to change our speed down. Or also on here, the trim switch, you can trim down and up. So we got 80 knots. Vertical speed is on here. So that was air speed. Vertical speed is up down. Air speed is left right. Now if we operate we can see we're at 200 500 feet per minute. We're climbing now, we're at 600 feet, nice little steady climb. Either part of it is all holding. Now, I'm moving my collective at the moment, and yes, you can see it is not doing anything. Right, what I'm going to do, and this is a feature in the next update, collective trim off, and there, I've got control. Re-engage, and the collective's back in again. If you own the Bell 412, this is the same as the call button. It just switches in. It. So now people are having problems with this, and I think it's all to do with the throttle settings. At the moment, I've got the throttle set to F2 and F1. So if I press F1 and F2, the throttle goes up and down but it's nicely working. Right, we're going to engage altitude mode. Now, I'm going to slow down. As you can see, we're still climbing a bit. It takes a, a bit for the autopilot to steady out. So we're just going down to 60 knots over the sea so we're going to go come down for a hover so the first approach mode all right first i'm going to go is into vertical speed mode again so we're in vertical speed and we'll select a nice descent rate at about 500 feet per minute as you can see the bug on the vertical speed indicator has moved to 500. Our airspeed bug is set on 60. On this version, which you haven't got yet, uh, before you could overspeed and just go around past 150 this time, if you go past the VNE, the display here will turn red. I'll show you later when we get to that. And also, it's a variable VNE. So as you increase the height, the VNE will decrease, and you'll see a red line coming down around the indicator. And you can only engage the autopilot to maximum of the VNE. That's to stop you over speeding, which you can. Same with the torque. In the version that's on release at the moment, you can pull as much torque as you want, it'll never go past 100% the uh, top position. In this variant, 
If you pull too much torque it will go into the yellow band and then into the red. I'll also show that later. Alright, we're descending. Now, some people didn't realize that you can set the decision height. If we select the green on here, then this button is then the decision height. Press the center and you get 200 feet set up. So at 200 feet, the rad out indicator will appear here, decision height. You can also adjust then we've brought it on now by going up a bit. Alright, we're also ready down here, so I'll engage approach mode. Approach disarmed. We're set 50 feet. So we should be coming down to 50 feet hover. We're still in heading mode. We should be coming down nicely and come to a hover at 50 feet. It takes time to stabilize. In fact, we're down at 35 feet according to the right out. What I will do, while we're at sea level now, I never set up my barrel height, so I'll set that. So we got the current QNH, which is 1011 on here. Now, as you can see, hover has come up. It's automatically engaged the hover. I haven't pressed any buttons. So it's slowing down. Now, I'm doing this in real weather, in real time. So, at the moment, the wind. I'm into wind, and it's 261, 11 knots. I've got a ground speed of 10 knots at the moment. Now, one of the things I've got to tell, well, if, if the winds are too high, you, you will find it hard to hover. It'll take longer to stabilize. But as you can see the ground speed is slowly decreasing, 7 knots, and we come to a nice steady hover. By the way, these flight director bars, just ignore them, because the uh, I've put them on for show really, and you can change it to the delta in the uh, options in the menu. If you watched the other video, you would have seen how to do that. Okay, we're still coming to a hover. Ah, we've got four knots on at the moment. When we get within hovering knots. Alright, we're in hover and we're in trim and heading. Now we're slightly drifting to the right but on the cyclic you can actually adjust your trim And if you hover, change your heading as well into wind a bit more. So with a bit of practice, you should be able to hold a nice steady. I'm putting in trim to the right at the moment. I'm trimming 
trim it back a bit. But well, basically, in this mode, you can use the trim. So if you set up your joystick with the trim, so it's bleep trim, pitch up and down, and bleep trim, roll left and right. If you set up those commands, you can then move sideways, forward, and if you use your heading knob, you can rotate. Because as we come into wind, the trim will go off and the wind will push us. Right, what I'm going to do now is engage speed mode. Increase my speed, which is the same trim pitch button. Also, I'm going to go into vertical speed mode. Increase my vertical speed. So we're now going to climb out at 500 feet per minute. 80 knots. Well, what I didn't show there when we were hovering, you can see the alt select. It's 50 feet. That's what we were hovering at. Just going up to 80 knots. Just climb out. So speed bug is on about 80. And we're at 500 feet. And we're climbing out. A facility I've added, when you go to Alt Select, select it here on the green, right, you see a little white mark above. So basically what it means, now if we go to here, if you push it, the white mark moves along. So if it white mark is over the, the first digit, then when you select, now this is when you're in that hover mode, you can go up or down. At a feet per minute. So if you were hovering, you would use it here. But if you put it on the thousands, We can go up a thousand feet at a time, or a hundred feet, or tens. All right, we're at a thousand feet at the moment. What happens when you engage out mode? Where at the moment we're climbing in vertical speed mode. I'll engage altitude hold. It will engage at the exact height you're at. You can then trim it using the out select to the height you want. So we're on 10,000 feet. All right, I'll put the digit on here on the first. Now within plus or minus 500 feet of the altitude you will have outsole in green on if you go outside 500 feet you will go into then vertical speed mode pre and you will have to select now what we're going to do is climb to a thousand two thousand feet so white digit on there of course this facility is only on this until you get the up gear you won't have this you'll just have to click 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 so, oh it's gone for some reason there we go 2000 feet as you can see we're in vertical speed mode and altitude mode but we're still on a thousand feet until uh, we select on the site the click a rate of climb so if you look at it 
we're going up and we'll put it at a thousand feet so we're going to start climbing at a thousand feet per minute right. as we're still going out to sea we'll rotate the heading bring this back into land Alright, so we're climbing at 500 feet per minute, or well, 1,000 feet per minute, but it looks like that. Just check. Yeah, 1,000 feet per minute. And once we get to it, it's just captured that altitude. Now, it automatically, once it's captured in there, it'll climb at 500. So it reduces the rate to 500 feet per minute until it actually gets to 2,000 feet so the last 500 feet always slows down a bit right so that is basically the vertical speeds and altitude all right as you seen earlier in heading mode oh, we're into cloud but it doesn't matter because we're flying an autopilot. Oh, there we're at a cloud again. So we're, we're just approaching the, the cloud base. As I said, I'm flying real weather. Now, first thing I'll show you is uh, the navigation. All right. If you want, we'll select the FMS here. All right. At the moment, they're red because now the previous flight I did was you can see already are in here so what we'll do direct to and we'll go right. I hit this gilma that's why I use the reality XP which is a hell of a lot better Oh, right. So we're going to go to Barton, enter, activate, we got that. We have to be here, CDI mode GPS. Alright, we're in it. Now this is where you would press the nav button down here uh, and go into nav mode. And now we're going to fly. As you can see up here, FMS. I know you can see on here we're coming in and going to fly direct. And we've got on here display to Barton, which is 25 miles. Now the the, the is incorrect in minutes. I'll have to correct that and fix that. It's a bug I've got. So we're heading to Barton. On the F all right. On here, let's go to nav two, and we'll go into. As you can see, we lost our FMS. We'll go into heading mode again, and we'll tune nav two to pole VOR. So there we got the VOR pole. Now right, there's two ways we can either go to it. We're in nav 2. We can select on that VOR 2. So that is pointing directly at it. And we then put our heading. And we're heading directly to P pole VOR. 31 miles an hour. This time the the distance time is correct. 20 minutes. For some reason that Barton one wouldn't come up correctly. I'll just clear this. So it doesn't interfere with anything. What I've found is with this default Garmin uh, when you actually if I went back to nav 2 
FMS, it's still got the original, it hasn't changed. Uh, if you use the Reality XP, it works well. I'll, I'll do another video to show it, it's fantastic, especially the GTN 750. Alright, back to Nav 2. And we'll see, it already goes to heading mode. Go back into VOR mode. Now this time, depending on what course you set, right, if I increase the course you can see the bar changes and it'll lock on. So if I put it outside, you'll see we're back in heading mode, so you would head at 45 degrees towards the vector you've selected, the course, and this will bring you over. Now, uh, just for speed, I will bring it in a bit quicker. And as soon as it locks, we're on VOR. Uh, if I change it out, we're on heading mode. So we're flying on heading, and we will intercept that vector, the course that we set 7-1. So, bring it back in, and we're back on VOR. That's navigation on, we're, this is basic VOR navigation, so we want to fly to a VOR beacon on a set course you would set the course down here using the course button here at the moment we're flying on VOR course um, you can also if you go to arc you will see the course now we're in map you can actually select the VOR mode and you get the, the bar in the middle as well so the blue again is the, the heading bug. Uh, I can move heading bug left and right or synchronize. Uh, these needles, you can see, is a little purple needle. And if we select ADF on this one, now I'm tuned. To 244 there. Alright. My last flight changed all the frequencies. I was playing around recording. So we went three. Seven, I think it's the right one for Wharton. Yeah, Wharton, ADF. So number two bug. Now if we go back to full, it's easier to see. Is over there. So now we're in VOR mode. So first thing I'll do is go into heading mode. Let's change the heading here, and we'll swing the bug around the number one needle the blue needle which is the ADF so now we're heading back towards war yeah but it's all cloud you can see on the map there's Wharton here and we're gonna swing around and head towards it so busy you can either navigate in the heading mode VOR mode or FMS mode now, what we're going to do is swing around east. Change to nav 1. And we're going to head east. 
I'll declutter and get rid of these other needles. Now at the moment that one's red, so I'll just tune it into the ILS for Wharton. And of course, we we'll have to change to 253 as we're going to do an ILS approach. Of course, at 253. At the moment, we got no signal. I'm going to increase because we're nearly all over the wrong position for the airfield. So we'll increase speed. But this is an opportunity to show you right. altitude select. We're on the first bar. We'll show you the variable VNE in this model. Right, we're going to increase. Thousand feet per minute. And we're, we're, we'll do about 110 knots. Already, you can see on here, as we've gone past 2,000 feet, the red bar has increased. So we're heading for 6,000 feet up into the cloud. We should break out the top, hopefully. I found like, I was flying yesterday in fog. My frame went went down. So it was a foggy day. You know, I tend to fly in real weather, and uh, the frame rate dropped a lot. So I don't know that's an, an XP11 problem. Also, I think a problem that I have with the uh, throttle and collective setting is to do XP11 because it worked okay in XP10. Right, as we're climbing up, the red bar is getting larger and larger. And we're just breaking out the top of the clouds. That's all cloudy below us, so... Decrease the range here. Well, I'll just head a little bit more to the You might know the fuel here. The way it works is one side goes down, then the other side, then the other. Down to about uh, 100 kg, and then they both go down together. So, uh, and also you may get a odd amber warning, and that's the Bell 412 plug-in, which is running, giving a low level fuel for the uh, that's about 198 pounds, I think it comes on, or 108. You, so if you get the odd amber caption come up, just cancel it. Alright, we're up in the clouds, and you can see the red line slowly getting bigger. Uh, this air helicopter is cleared to 20,000 feet. Uh, it's good if you're flying and you want to get above the, the weather and you, you climb to 6,000, 10,000 feet, really. Okay. Because we're going to do an ILS approach, we're going to go back down again. So what I'm going to do is change the vertical speed. So at the moment where we're going up, I'll change it to going down. About 1,000 feet, so... 
I also slept back down to 2,000 feet. Autopilot is sometimes slow to react. Could be a fact that we've got a 14 knot wind. We've got a, a ground speed of 130 knots at the moment. Right, I'll increase. We don't want to make this video too long. Go down at 2,000 feet per minute. See the bugs down at 2,000. I'm still improving things. I want to get a uh, single operation training mode fixed and that there and working. And that was the idea of putting in the yellow and red on the torque. The other leagues will always be green, so you, no matter what you do same here the RPM will always be green eventually I'll get these to change colour if you exceed uh, engine pressures and temperatures they will show red yellow and green so at the moment and a hydraulic pressure so at the moment we're all in the green which is good all right. we're descending quickly of course, I don't want to overshoot. I will decrease the rate already to a thousand feet. So, if you're using the buttons down here to disengage, engage, you will find that when you're engaged, the first press will change the reading here to whatever you were altitude and. The second press will di disengage it, so you may find that on the buttons, depending on what state you are, you may have to press it out or, or that twice to disengage that mode. It's better if you set up uh, a joystick or something like that with buttons, and then you can engage, disengage without having to press twice. Slowly. As you can see, we're captured in the altitude mode. And we're going to swing around and head towards Wharton. And I think we've gone quite a fair bit away. See down the bar here. They, we've now picked up the ILS. Before engaging, I'm waiting because this airfield's got vertical speed as well. So vertical glide slope, I should say. So we're heading towards Wharton now. Uh, at the moment we're 14 miles, 14.4 miles away from it. Uh, in the, the GTN, the Reality XP version I've got, I've added a few other things that you don't see on here. Up in this area here, you get what mode the uh, the GTNs and waypoint messages will display up here. Uh, if we're flying over a marker, and this is in this, the marker signal, outer, inner, middle marker will come on here, right? 
here we can see the glide slopes come on so what I'll do is engage ILS it's as soon as pressing a button so you can see we got in white glide slope and localizer and we're still in altitude and heading mode So we're flying at 2,000 feet to intercept the glide slope. Now, back course, if we were flying in, as you can see we're flying into the wind, the wind is 2948 knots. If you wanted to use back course, uh, I haven't got a button down here for back course, it's not on the Bell 429, it automatically senses the real Bell 49 automatically, oh we just come out of the cloud which which mean mode you're in but for me you have to program uh, a button to select back course and you'll get BC up here instead of localizer when you're on back course so uh, slowly coming in Right, I'm going to decrease the speed 10 knots at a time, so there we're going bring it down 10 knots we're still 10 miles, 10.8, I think it about 8 miles will be the glide slope, we should hit the localizer soon to turn a little bit more because it's quite a good capture. I think I read in the Bell 429 manual that the ILS approach should be done at 80 knots. It all depends on wind and weather and that. So we got 9.8 miles. We're down at 90 knots. Basically, you fly towards the bar to engage the localizer course that you've set here. So we'll set 253, which is Wharton. We're still 8.8 .8 miles away. Alright, so I've left the decision. So I'll go decision high. At 200. You see that the little red bar comes out now and then here. That's a program it in so below 2,000 feet, you know, real restriction in VNE, you can fly up to 155 knots. Above 2,000 feet, the correction starts coming in and the VNE reduces the altitude and temperature. Here we just 
locked on to the localizer, so here it's changed localizer. And now it's doing a nice steady approach. We're still on the green, and we're below the cloud level, so we can actually see Lancashire. This is Northwest England, that's the M6 down there. bringing this around on course. Once we're on course I tend to synchronize. You can in the distance here you can see the airfield lights. And as you can see here the uh, glide slope is slowly coming down so we we'll are set the glide slope. I can cue the Q bars are doing nothing, they just for show. I think they're pretty. I would love them to do work correctly so that you would have a flight director mode and you could fly but at the moment it's beyond my uh, I have no control over the Bell 412 plug in. It's a commercial plug-in and it's very nice thing to let me use it. Right. Now we're coming down and we should just capture the glide slope. There we go, capture the glide slope. So now we'll start descending. Right. What we can do, I'll program on here, go around. Um, there's a bug on the one I released and I fixed it so if I press go around you will see go around go around go around and basically what it does is put in a, a 500 feet climb go back to approach and we're back onto capture and localizer so if you press go around it will carry on on locked on the localizer if you select heading and airspeed, all it would do is put you into a, a 500 feet per minute climb when you select go around and while well, we're still going in on the glide slope our ground speed is 86 knots it's looking good, we've got still 5 miles to run uh, what have I missed out? Record most of the modes. Yeah, I've actually added a few more as I showed earlier. The trim switch is now active. The flight director decouple, so if we pressed here, we decouple the flight director. Um, cable cut and that um, is not actually used. Hoist, when you have the hoist and you operate hoist on and that and put it out, you can then go on here. Uh, you can like program. A a joystick button so you can go up and down in the hoist or stop it. So that is now working. And that, and that, and that. We're doing a nice approach. Uh, the wheel is coming up. My house is round right about here. And you can see the fuel is quite on balance at the moment, but do not worry about the fuel. Yes. Providing you've got the transfer forward transfer and boost pump balance pump here on 
this will even out by the end. If you have them off, what will happen is the number one engine will just run down and down, and then your engine will cut out. You would lose number one engine, and you'd still have fuel. So it's essential to make sure these two switches are always forward in the normal position. Looking for more autopilot related things, tell you. Um, the heading bug on the the, the co pilot's one. Oh, we're coming in, we're coming into land, right. What we'll see is a 200 feet decision type comes on. So, what I'm going to do is disconnect flag director, disconnect. Again, collective. Now, when your collective engages, is depending on how some people have it, some people don't. Your joystick, when when you engage the the collective, you have a climb or a a jump. Some it's smooth, some it's not. You can set collective reverse. Sometimes that fixes it, but so at the moment. I've got control, control of the collective. Now what I'll do is increase, we'll show that torque. So we're looking here, we're on into the yellow. So, and if we go too high into the red. Uh, it's actually showing two needles, so if you had lost one engine, you, you've got the number two needle and number one needle. into land. Um, in that attitude mode what I didn't show was you can set up special button cyclic force trim release if you look at uh, when you set up the button so in attitude mode if you want to move the the cyclic and you can press the, the trim release let's bring it into wind bit of a bumpy landing. I've done a lot better. So now we're landed. And as I was saying, in the attitude mode, at mode, you can actually program a special button. If you go to, let's go to joystick. Alright. My throttle here, this is what I use. But uh, at the moment I've got it switched out, testing. Uh, as you can see I've got quite a lot. I've got CH pedals. I also use track IR. So if we go to... Right, I'll stick. Right. And if we go to that button. We see here cyclic force trim release. So basically, I can press that button and it means I can move the pitch and roll when in at mode. So if you want to move your controls, press that and then you can move your. In at mode, if you do a very large mode it overrides that and you will like if you're descending the ground you want to pull you can pull back and it will override if you want to have slight movements operate the trim release 
when you're in the right attitude again you can then release the trim release and it will hold that position um, another in the special buttons but I haven't programmed it that's inhibit uh, TOS and GTN that one is uh, you can program a special button for trims so when it's operated then you're if you have your hat switch set up as a view command so you can change your views left right up down operating the special button trim at the same time turns the view into a trim switch so but with this track R IR I'm using it doesn't work so I have to switch out the track IR to, to get that facility to work so I don't use it well I hope that helps people get into the autopilot um, the bug with the collective not releasing I'm ho hoping to try and sort that out also when in the new version when you start up with engine running as a lot of people do I've found I prefer to do a long start and start up manually but if you start up everything should be set up ready to go once it's settled when you get a hundred percent RPM on here you can then take off and fly so that's in the new and hopefully this update will come out soon and shortly after that I'll release the GTN versions and uh, reality XP versions but while I'm changing the main one it's uh, no, no point re releasing any of the other ones yet and uh, shortly after that I hope to re release the the wheeled version which I'm flying around all the time with two GTNs and it's fantastic okay that's the end of the video for today bye